Hey gang. Finally, three weeks later, Rachel's Vegas Vacation 2022, and it, I will be doing it in two parts, and we will start out with the food. For some reason, I have my pages all backwards. Now, I'm hoping that my dog, Odin, will be quiet and not distract anyone from uh, what, what we're talking about here. Uh, I was there for four nights, and uh, we were there in, here, you want this? Get up here. Get up here on the couch. <laughs> from the 24th through the 28th of January. Get up here. Come on. Right here. So sit down and eat it. Uh, and we went to four different restaurants and uh, for dinner each night, me and a friend of mine. You may have seen her uh, for a second in my uh, video that I did from House of Blues, that two minute, that little two minute thing, uh, just to say hi. Uh, anyway, getting back to uh, what I ate. The first day we were there, on the 24th, we went to Emeralds, New Orleans, um, Fish House at uh, um, Caesar's Palace. Nope, sorry, MGM Grand. MGM Grand, it was in the MGM Grand. And the uh, food there was, started out really good. Um, for starters, we had a, a barbecue shrimp, and uh, I had also an organic baby green salad, um, and I, I ate like a, I ate like a pig. But I had been fasting for some time, and I was kind of hungry, and I wanted to try everything. So I we also had gumbo. Now, somewhere along the line. Uh, something got mixed up with the appetizers. I ordered a green salad and my friend ordered the gumbo. And then I said, when the waiter came back, I said, you know what, I think I'd like some gumbo too. And, and my friend said, I think I'd like that salad. Well, they were worried about presenting the, I think they were worried about presenting the food to us at the right times. And we said, it's okay, just, you know, you can bring the entree with the second appetizer, that's fine. We understand. But they didn't. And when we got our, our entrees, which were uh, grilled carabuda pork chops, we each ordered the same thing. My friend's was delicious, according to her, and mine was dry. Mine was very dry. And I was very hungry, and so I was a trooper and tried to eat it. And I got, I got probably a little better than halfway through it, and I just couldn't do it anymore. And um, so some of that that I was trying to masticate uh, ended up back on my plate. And I covered my plate up with my napkin. And the waiter came back and said, is everything okay? For the fourth time, uh, he was very attentive. The wait staff was excellent. But for the fourth time, he said, is everything okay? And everything had been. And, and I told him, yeah, everything's fine. And, at that point, I said, well, in the interest of constructive criticism, the, the pork chop's pretty dry, and you probably shouldn't have left, left it under the warming light. You know, probably should have just got our app, take, given it to us with the appetizers. And he said, that's not what we did. Your pork chop came out right on time, nice and fresh. And I said, well, it's dry. And he says, well, I'll get the manager. And I said, don't get the manager. Please don't get the manager. It's okay, no big deal. He left, and pretty soon the manager came over. And I, and if you've ever had to deal with an issue like this, uh, what comes next, right, from the manager, right? Who can tell me, who can guess what he said? He walked up to the table and he said, is everything okay with your food? And I said, uh, everything's fine. And he said, well, I, I heard there might have been something, a problem with something. <laughs> he knows what the problem was. And I said, well, the pork chop was dry, but, you know, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. And he said, uh, he leaned down and he looked and he stood back up and he looked at me and he said, well, it looks like you ate most of it. See, and that was the next response out of his mouth was, it looks like you ate most of it. Like I was 
doing something dishonest or nefarious or something. And I said, oh, I'm working with you here, guy. I, I'm hungry. I, I was trying to eat it, you know, and I, and I just couldn't get it all down. And I, I picked up a steak knife with the serrations on it. And I started sawing on a piece of the, the pork chop. And I, I probably went back and forth maybe 10 times, pushing down on it before it hit the plate, before my knife blade hit the plate. And I said, would you like to try this? Because he was making me mad. And up to this point, I didn't want a refund. I didn't want anything. I just was trying to be constructively critical. And he said, well, what can we do to make you happy? And I said, at this point, nothing. And he said, well, there's got to be something we could do. How about I give you a free glass of wine? And I said, I, I don't want a free glass of wine. I still have a half a glass of wine here. And he said, well, how about we comp you a dessert? I said, I don't want to eat any more food here in this restaurant. I'm done. And he said, well, there's got to be something we could do to make you happy. What, what, can, what can I do to make you happy? And I said, take the pork chop off the bill. And he said, uh, well, I'm, I guess I can. It's not my money. What do I care? To, now I'm really mad. And I, and I said, you know, um, that was probably one of the worst things that you could have said. If you are the manager of this restaurant, it, it's your responsibility to, to make your customers happy, but to make, make a profit too, isn't it? Do you go, do you go in the back and, and let your, your people stand around and do nothing? Because why should you care? It's not your money that's paying them to do their job. And um, of course, <laughs> my friend across the table has seen me in, in moods like this and has seen people try to push me and has seen me push back. And I, I, I looked at her and she, and she had this look in her eyes like, You've said enough, don't say any more. And so I just, I, I left it at that. And he took the pork chop off the bill. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a good experience and I'll probably never eat there again at that restaurant. I may eat at another one in some other city, but I'll never eat there again. Now, let's get on to night two. Night two, we went to Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen, which is just outside of Caesar's Palace in Vegas, of course. And we ordered what they call their Prix Fix menu from their Prix Fix menu, I guess is how you say it. And we ordered um, the entree. We started out with the Caesar salad uh, and they paired, we let them pair the wines to every course that they served us. So that we started out with a Caesar salad and with a Chardonnay. And it was good. It was great. It was a nice old Caesar salad. Everything was fresh. All the, all the ingredients were spot on. Uh, the, the dressing was nice. It wasn't too strong. And for the for the entree, the thing that came, what came next was a beef Wellington, and in a, with glazed root vegetables, uh, and and that came with a uh, 2015 Cabernet Sauvignon, which was perfect. And um, I have nothing. I, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a lady of few words. It was, everything was great. Uh, filled me up. Uh, there was, the portions were awesome. Um, and, and for dessert, we had sticky toffee pudding, which is, <laughs> it's got to be my favorite. It's got to be my favorite. And I know I have a subscriber that uh, saw me post on Instagram a picture of it. And she, uh, she's also a subscriber to this channel, and she's going to send me a recipe. And I, I can't find I haven't seen it yet. So if you watch this video, please send me the recipe. I want to try it. The, um, it, it comes with a, a dollop of vanilla ice cream on top, and it's just, it's, a, it's just what it says if you've never had it. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a, uh, a soft, kind of a, a flaky, brownie, Kind of texture. Um, there's there's obviously some dough. I think a little bit of dough involved in this, and some baking involved in this, and um, uh, it uh, it was it's just the sweetest. And and if you're into chocolate, um, 
so nice, and it was paired with a port wine, and I didn't realize that port wine was all this sweet. I thought this might have been the only port wine that was this sweet. But if you literally took a bite, a mouthful of sticky toffee pudding, and, and then a sip of the port wine, I've never, I, I'm not a, I, you, you know from my other uh, critiques of restaurants that I am not a food connoisseur necessarily. And I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I could really say that 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 wine and that dessert were paired perfectly. The way it changed the flavor a little bit and enhanced the flavor and everything just went together and, and um, it was awesome. They both had the tartness and the tanginess, but yet the sweetness too. It was really good. It was really good. Next time I go there, I think I'm just going to order like uh, three orders of sticky toffee pudding and... Um, and a, and a treadmill for dessert. The third night, we went to the House of Blues uh, for a show, and uh, I'm going to do the show in the second part of this of this of these videos. Uh, we went to the House of Blues and had dinner before the show. The House of Blues is in Mandalay Bay. It's really easy to get to. We Ubered right to the one of the entrances to Mandalay Bay, walked in. Um, you have to wear a mask, of course, in Vegas unless you're actively drinking or eating. So there's just so happens there's a bar right there when you walk in. So we walked to the bar, got drinks, and then walked across the, the way, a short, a short walk into the House of Blues with our drinks and no masks. I, you all know I believe in masks and I believe in COVID. I'm not, but when... when when you when both people have been vaxxed um, and boosted, and one of them just got over COVID, even though they've been vaxxed and boosted, um, and there's no one else around, uh, I don't see the need to wear a mask. The uh, dinner there started out with what they call voodoo shrimp, which uh, is is shrimp sauteed shrimp in a beer reduction sauce over jalapeno cheese cornbread and we were you know this this is good comfort food stuff you know uh we we then had i had a cajun chicken pasta for an entree and that that was bow tie pasta with a cajun cream sauce blackened chicken and dewy sausage bell peppers red onions basil and a parmesan cheese and I didn't have any dessert. I was full. I couldn't even finish my my chicken, my um, Cajun chicken pasta. We had no dessert there, but the food was excellent. And the waiter was great. You know, once again, in every one of these places we ate, uh, all the restaurants, the, the staff, with the exception of the manager at Emeralds, were awesome. And they, did, they deserve every cent of the tip I gave them. And, and I, I tip, if I may say so, I tip handsomely. I don't do a bad job of tipping. Uh, day four, uh, we went to Piero's Italian restaurant. Our original, original plan was to go to Rayo's, um, but Rayo's closed last year, 2021. So we went to Piero's, which is every bit, uh, is, an excellent, um, is an excellent restaurant, one that I would return to. I would return to that restaurant. If I'm ever in Vegas again, I will definitely a book of dinner at Piero's. It's off the strip, um, and it's out of the way, but it is, it's, it's the place to go. We had shrimp cocktail for an appetizer, uh, which the shrimp were like five inches long, and the shrimp sauce had just the right amount of horseradish in it, and, and I had a Pinot Noir uh, with, all, with all of that, the same, I drank the same red wine with everything. For dinner, I had a linguine pomodoro, which was basically in their red sauce. I asked them for a pasta pasta dish with their signature red sauce, and that's what the waiter suggested. And then I asked, I asked for a meatball, and the meatball had just the right amount of Parmesan cheese in it, and it melted in your mouth, and uh, everything was great. For dessert, there we ate dessert. Believe it or not, after all that, uh, with we we had we shared a, a raspberry cheesecake, and the, the the slice was probably six inches long, from the point to the outside, 
and probably it was it was probably three inches wide at the outside, giant and this tall, just a giant piece of cheesecake and a, and a light but light, very light. We 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 finished it off. Um, it was really really good. The whole thing is really good. That restaurant, Piero's Italian, it's quiet. The booths have the booths have glass over them up that comes up on the sides and stuff. So you're sitting in there and you can talk to each other, but you can't hear anybody else. The tables, of course, out in the in the in the main floor. You know, there's they're noisy, but it it was fine. I mean, everybody's having a good time. I don't care. I like eating eating around other people. If everybody's having fun. So overall, uh, Piero's was great. Hell's Kitchen was great. Even House of Blues was awesome. Um, you know, Emeralds tried. They tried, uh, but you know, the personalities, the personality issues left me wanting. You know, there. And these dinners, I mean, for uh, the Emeralds would have been a three hundred dollar, three hundred and twenty five dollar meal. You know, you shouldn't be eating dry meat when it comes out. Not for $320 for two people. Right? Just agree. I hope that this was worth the wait, guys. I know some people uh, were saying on Facebook they, they wanted to hear my, my trip. Day, day one... After, oh, we'll talk about that in the talk about that in the next video. I hope uh, you enjoyed this one. And if you're thinking about going to Vegas and you want to eat at one of these restaurants, uh, you better make sure you bring a credit card with no with no balance on it um, or a lot of cash. The do I do I spend too much for food when I go on vacation? Yep, yep. Some I know a guy that has a, a twelve thousand dollar watch, wristwatch. Okay, it, I think he spends too much on watches. Uh, the the uh, you know uh, you can get a you can get a twenty five dollar watch at Walmart though tell time pretty pretty well. Hey Ross. Yes. Love and peace to all, and let's just try to accept one another for who they are.